Mercedes, published in 2014, marks Stephen King's foray into the hard-boiled detective genre. While King is renowned for his iconic horror novels such as It, Carrie, Pet Cemetery, and The Shining, he traverses various genres, including supernatural, suspense thriller, mystery, science fiction, and fantasy. His extensive body of work encompasses novels, short stories, and nonfiction, often blurring the lines between genres. Mr. Mercedes serves as the first book in the Bill Hodges trilogy, followed by Finders Keepers and End of Watch, published in 2015 and 2016, respectively. The novel earned critical acclaim, winning the 2015 Edgar Allan Poe Award for Best Novel from the Mystery Writers of America and receiving the Goodreads Choice Award for Best Mystery and Thriller Novel in 2014. Additionally, a television series adaptation based on the book premiered in 2017. The narrative unfolds in three parts, each consisting of two or three substantial chapters. Set in 2009, the story employs a third-person past tense narration. In April 2009, a man self-dubbed the Mercedes Killer, or Mr. Mercedes, plows a Mercedes sedan into a crowd of unemployed individuals attending a job fair. Leaving eight dead and twelve injured, the perpetrator manages to escape. A year later, Bill Hodges, a recently retired detective, finds retirement challenging. His entire identity was intertwined with his job, and he struggles to envision a future without it. Divorced and estranged from his adult daughter, Hodges even contemplates suicide at times. However, his depression takes an unexpected turn when he receives a letter from the killer, mocking his inability to solve the case before retiring. The letter provides Hodges with instructions to contact the killer through an online chat room named under Debbie's blue umbrella. Rather than involving the police, Hodges decides to take matters into his own hands and investigates the case independently. Mr. Mercedes presents a gripping tale of suspense and cat and mouse pursuit as Hodges matches wits with the cunning and elusive killer. Mercedes, the culprit behind the murders, acquired the stolen car used in the heinous acts from a wealthy woman named Olivia Trelawney. Tragically, Olivia succumbs to guilt and takes her own life a few months later. During Hodges' investigation, Trelawney denies leaving the spare key in the car. However, Hodges and his partner, Pete Huntley, remain skeptical and partially blame her for enabling the crimes. The identity of Mr. Mercedes is unveiled as Brady Hartsfield, a troubled young man in his 20s. Brady works as an IT technician at Discount Electronics and drives an ice cream truck in Hodges' neighborhood as a second job. Brady lives with his alcoholic mother, with whom he shares an incestuous relationship. In their home, Brady maintains a basement control room activated by voice commands. This secret space houses homemade plastic explosives and cell phone detonators. As the investigation progresses, Hodges reaches out to Olivia's younger sister, Janie. Janie presents Hodges with a letter sent by Mr. Mercedes to Olivia, inviting her to communicate through the Debbie's Blue Umbrella chat room. Janie hires Hodges to uncover the sender's identity. Jerome Robinson, a 17-year-old residing nearby Hodges, occasionally assists with lawn maintenance. Jerome possesses exceptional technical skills and aspires to attend an Ivy League school. Hodges seeks his expertise to determine how the killer accessed Olivia Trelawney's car without a key or forced entry. Jerome informs Hodges about a device capable of capturing the radio signal emitted by a remote key fob, suggesting that this method was employed by the killer. One evening, Hodges provokes Mr. Mercedes by posting a message in the chat room, prompting Brady to seek revenge by targeting Jerome's dog. Brady purchases gopher poison and mixes it with raw hamburger meat, intending to feed it to the dog. However, while Brady is away at work, his mother discovers the meat and unknowingly consumes it, resulting in a painful death from the poison. Brady escalates the stakes by planting a bomb in Hodge's car, resulting in the tragic death of Janie instead. Driven by a burning desire to locate and bring justice to Mr. Mercedes, Hodges leaves a provocative message on the Blue Umbrella site, tauntingly stating, Missed me. Enraged by this taunt, Brady devises a plan to end his own life at a boy band concert attended by thousands of teenage girls. Pretending to have a physical disability, he intends to use his wheelchair as a bomb to gain entry into the concert venue. Following Janie's demise, her cousin Holly joins forces with Hodges and Jerome to hunt down the killer responsible. 
While investigating, Holly and Jerome discover concealed audio files on Olivia's computer, along with the program used by Mr. Mercedes to remotely play these files. They convince Olivia that the spirits of Mr. Mercedes' victims are accusing her of complicity in their deaths. Realizing that the audio files could only have been planted by an IT specialist, Hodges learns that Olivia sought assistance from Discount Electronics for her computer troubles. With only three members on the IT team at Discount Electronics, Brady Hartsfield matches Hodges' profile of the Mr. Mercedes killer. Upon reaching Brady's residence, Hodges stumbles upon the decomposing body of Brady's mother and uncovers the basement computer control room. Meanwhile, Holly diligently searches for Brady's computer passwords. Jerome checks the blue umbrella site and discovers a message from Mr. Mercedes addressed to Hodges, bidding him farewell and encouraging him to enjoy his weekend. Hodges interprets this message as an indication that they have two days left to apprehend the killer before he strikes again. However, Jerome remembers that his sister and mother are planning to attend the concert that night. Acting swiftly, Hodges contacts a friend in the venue's security department, alerting him to be on the lookout for a potential threat. But the friend dismisses the notion that a child molester would attempt to enter the concert. Assured of their safety, he informs Jerome that his mother and sister can attend the event without worry. Finally, Holly manages to gain access to Brady's computers. While Holly and Jerome meticulously comb through the hard drives, Hodges stumbles upon the remnants of Brady's failed bomb attempt. Simultaneously, Holly and Jerome discover an email confirming Brady's ticket to enter the concert. With a sense of urgency, they rush to the concert venue, only to find the audience already seated and the performance in progress. To complicate matters further, Hodges realizes he's experiencing a heart attack and is unable to confront Brady himself. Holly deduces that the only way Brady could gain entry is by posing as someone with a disability, guaranteeing him a seat in the handicapped section. Realizing this, Holly seizes the opportunity and stealthily approaches Brady from behind, delivering a devastating blow to his skull using Hodge's improvised weapon, the Happy Slapper, a sock filled with ball bearings. Although Brady is severely injured, he remains alive but incapacitated, as a token of appreciation for their courageous efforts, Holly and Jerome are honored with the keys to the city. Hodges survives the heart attack, and despite his unauthorized investigation of Mr. Mercedes, he evades prosecution. He embarks on a new career as a skip tracer for a bail bondsman, with Hull by his side, assisting him in his endeavors. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.